we have the director and founder of Ad Wanted Events talking with Justin Sampson, um, CEO of Barb. So I'd like to welcome you to the stage. Thanks. Please put your hands together. Can you all hear me? There we go. So you're going to be replaced by a robot. <laughs> Do you think you'll be replaced by a robot? Have one day, yeah, probably. Okay. Um, when we all. So I, I don't think I've ever interviewed a Justin before. I've never been interviewed by somebody called Justin. No. Um, it's, it's, it's a strange thing. I think it's just because it's maybe a, just a silly North American name. Um, I was born in Canada. And, uh, I wasn't. Uh, no. Where were you born? I was born in uh, Newcastle on Tyne in the mid 1960s. There weren't many Justins there, I'll tell you that. With that accent, did you go to a posh school? Uh, I left when I was six to Bournemouth. All right, so. fair enough. So it's been, an, I think it's been a fascinating year for, for, for JIX. I think um, the US have formed one, if you guys know about that, and they've got an extraordinary opinion on JIX and how they should be formed. Um, but in normal markets outside of the uh, outside of the US, I think chicks have been under quite a bit of pressure, haven't they, justifying um, their existence? Um, and it's basically on the basis that uh, linear is under pressure. There's more streaming inventory, and broadcasters could theoretically they could, you know, they could go back to clients with data on impressions from ad servers and all that sort of stuff. Do you feel under pressure at all? Do you have to? justify your existence before you're taken over by technology and robots? Uh, well, everybody's under pressure. You're only as good as your next board meeting. I think that's true for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think without being complacent, so back in 2021, at the end of a extensive tender process, the broadcasters and the media agencies that underwrite Barb's existence committed to Barb's long-term future by putting in place an agreement until the end of the decade. So on, on that basis, I sort of um, feel relatively secure. But I think your point about linear is interesting, but we need to keep it in perspective, because um, according to our data, 60% of all viewing, and when I say all viewing, including SVOD, AVOD, and video sharing, yeah. is to linear. And we know five and a half billion pounds is spent on TV advertising. The vast majority of that is linear, which is accounted for by Barb. The rest, uh, VOD, is accounted for by C-Flight, and recently it was announced that Barb is coming under C-Flight, um, sorry, C-Flight is coming under Barb's uh, governance, and I think this is a, a case of um, words being turned into action. What I mean by that is that the future of TV last year, Kelly Williams of ITV talked about the importance of competing like mad on content, mm -hmm. but collaborating on things like data and, and, and measurement. So the fact the sea flights coming towards Barb is, is testimony to the values of joint industry principles to oversee measurement, not just for linear, but for, for VOD as well. So, and sea flight is, is there, for, I'm sure everyone understands it in this room, but it's to understand incremental reach over VOD from your linear across uh, ITV Channel 4 and Sky. I know I'll paraphrase that. It's just, that's, that's about right though, isn't it? That's, that's right, yeah. Okay, but you're also, you're doing something which I think is very sensible. You're bringing on the likes of the streamers, the Netflixes yeah. and Disney. Is it, are you, just, are you just measuring what they do or are they gonna be part of the currency? What's the actual? So th the first thing that we did for not, not just those that have come on board, but other wall garden platforms is to do what we can independently. To, to measure their audiences. And we've got a couple of techniques we use. I won't dive into them, but since the end of no, uh, 2021, every day we've been producing for the SVODs, uh, reach and time spent across all devices in the home. We've been delivering SVOD content ratings. So if you wanna know how many people watched Harry and Meghan, you get Barb data for that now. Yeah. Um, and we also do reach and time spent for the likes of YouTube and TikTok. So what Netflix and Disney, who've committed to, to Barb, have signed up to is, is that data. But what we also know, and going back again to Future of TV last December, Jeremy Gorman, I know she's moved on, but she was talking about how Netflix <laughs> wanted to be part of she did. the TV yeah. industry. And everything that we hear in our conversations with Peter Naylor, with Damien Benet, and all the team we're dealing with is that um, they want to be part of our total campaign reporting. So yeah. whilst they've bought into what we're doing, maybe more news to come. I think that's good for both sides of the market. I think it's good for you guys to, to marry up with them and, and vice versa. Um, but it's interesting, not, it's not the same in all other markets. We noticed that Netflix and Disney are struggling to become part of Jix in other markets. Do you know why that is, given your reach in all these different um, 
these different international markets? Um, I mean, I've heard various things. It would be wrong of me to comment on gossip, but, but part of the reason they've moved a bit more quickly with us is that here in the UK we have moved further and quicker to provide a joint industry independent measurement of these services. Mm -hmm. okay. So the conversation with Netflix was m much quicker, and I know they sort of are trying to work with other countries, but I'm not going to get dragged into why that's maybe not going as quickly. Okay, so I guess the crux of this is 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 measuring traditional media, you know, your uh, traditional broadcasters with with BVOD, with digital. So planners, uh, people buying media across these, which everyone's doing, they can understand uh, your reach and you can execute across these different platforms. So the obvious question is, how's it going with Google? So with Google, as I said, we're already reporting reach and time spent. Um, are we you did doing it. that with their blessing, or are you doing that no, because no, no. you can with your digital media? Uh, we, we, we do it with our, uh, we've, we've got a meter that we put on the Wi-Fi routers in panel That's homes, right. which gives us all viewing on all devices in the panel home. Yeah. Um, uh, so we, we're looking to talk to Google. We um, did a big industry consultation last autumn, and the question that we took to advertisers and agencies is, look, we, we've done this with Netflix, we've done this with Disney, we're obviously doing what we've keep doing, have been doing for many years with the broadcasters. Yeah. Um, we, we want to get, sort of make more progress in measuring content on YouTube, but I mean, it's a well-worn statistic, 500 hours of content being uploaded to YouTube every minute. Right. I mean, that's the equivalent of 39 box sets of Stranger Things. And you, you just can't practically measure all of that content. So we asked the industry, what do we prioritize? And they came back and said, well, we want any content that's brand safe. Yeah. And there's also a, a buy side demand for content that meets a higher quality threshold. It's not just brand safe, but it's, it, it could show on a regulated environment and there's demonstrable production uh, qualities. And we call that fit for TV. And, yeah. and, and the, agency, the, the agencies and advertisers want to identify that type of content because they don't think all, all content is born equal. And one of the uh, people in the consultation used the analogy of when you go and buy beef, you don't just buy beef. You say, well, actually, for this I need sirloin, or for this I need um, uh, silver science. So I'm not very good at no. beef, forgive me. No. But in extra, some, lean. Extra, extra lean. Extra lean. But in some yeah. cases, you might just think, oh, I just want some chuck. <laughs> yeah. And, but they, they need transparency on what kind of beef they're buying. And in, in the same way, they want transparency on what kind of content they're buying on YouTube. Yeah, well, we're going to come to transparency, but very quickly, what do you need? Because you've got digital meters anyway, and you can, you can measure this, or you can see how much people are consuming. But what do you need from Google specifically? Is it like an EPG, or, or an understanding of the content that people are actually watching? Well, I think there's um, t two sort of big questions in terms of uh, can a, a joint industry solution I embrace an organization, a service like YouTube? And one is, is there alignment on what level of content is being reported? And the second is, is there alignment on metrics? Yeah. And almost before you get to the technical issues, those questions have to be resolved. All right, well, we're also going to come on to that. With transparency, do you think Google want to be transparent? Because I've had, I've had this conversation with Jicks all around the world, and it ends up in the same place. They, they, they flirt with you at events, don't they? They haven't flirted with me, no. They don't flirt with you? Not with me, they no. They say the right thing on stage, but when it actually comes down to doing business, it doesn't happen. It falls at the last hurdle, or it falls at the first hurdle. Is that the case here? Is, it, is this just a waste of time having this conversation? Uh, let's see. I, mean, we, I think we're a bit of fresh impetus in the conversations at the moment. I'd rather not um, put that in peril. We do go around in circles with this, though. I don't think that's an unfair question, is yeah. it? I'll probably get in trouble for that. But how, all right, how about this then? Doug Pfeiffer, for the CEO from Oztam, same role as him in Australia, said, said this on stage. He said, you know, I'm pretending to look at my phone. I actually didn't write this down. So I'm just sending, pretending that I've actually written this. So it's verbatim. But he said, as soon as you get them in the room and you have conversations with them, it's a complete waste of time. Agree or disagree with what Doug said? Uh, I think we need to see what's happening. Because there's two things they've said publicly this year, which I think are interesting in terms of a potential sense of direction. So first of all, their latest quarterly earnings, Philip Schindler was talking about trying to take ownership of the, the TV set and he referenced a 30 second Who's spot. Philip? He's, um, I don't remember his title, but I think he's oh, basically okay. the top chap in Google for YouTube. Right, yeah. And then early this week in campaign, sorry to mention another magazine, sorry. Um, there was news that they're bringing back 30 second un unskippable ads on the TV set here in the UK. So mm. th that suggests that they're interested in brand advertising. 
If you're interested in brand advertising, then you probably need to be measured on equal basis with all those other media that are looking to get brand advertising. Mm -hmm. So I think if you take those two public statements and say, well, if this is a direction of travel, then you kind of think, well, if they are going to compete and be able to um, demonstrate on an equitable basis how well they do against the likes of ITV and Channel yeah. 4 and Netflix, then they kind of need to be measured on the same basis. I know. Uh, we've, we, uh, yeah, I, I think the likelihood is still pretty slim because I just don't think they need to. Um, they, they should do, but I don't think they need to. So you mentioned metrics. Um, now, you wrote this piece about looking at second-by-second second reporting. Now, is this you making a compromise towards digital to maybe you know, entice them in? Flirting with Google, the other way around? We don't um, flirt. No, so what's this? You don't flirt. No. Right, so what is this then? Because this, this, this has got major implications on trading, surely, if you change. We've, we've looked at this quite a bit over the years, and the, the, the way in which we currently calculate reach and frequency is uh, it, we do it minute by minute. Yeah. I won't go into any more detail than that, it's quite complicated. But it's a method that was designed when pretty much all viewing was, could be linked back to a linear schedule. Either it was live at the point of broadcast or it was time shifted and you could pin it back to the program it was shown in. The, the reality is we all know that more and more viewing is to content that it isn't part of a linear schedule and hasn't been part of a linear schedule. Mm -hmm. So at some point in our life, and we looked at this about three years ago, um, we're going to have to look and see, is that minute by minute still the best method for reporting all uh, viewing programs and commercials? Mm -hmm. and, and at the time, we were in the middle of a tender process. Um, we were transitioning from one type of meter to another, and we, we had evidence of what the implications would be. And we said, well, look, we can't really know what's going to happen until we've completely installed the new meters. And we're, we're there now. So that's one of the reasons we're doing it. Okay. Now, one of the byproducts of, of, of the decision, if the decision is taken, because I, I do need to stress it's not been taken yet, and we're, we're, we're exploring it, is that it could lead to a situation where uh, we are able to report on a metric that we know Google has said publicly it likes, which is the MRC standard of at least two seconds and 100% pixels in view. Um, but I think that what's very clear from the data we've already explored is that the, the evidence is that the, on the vast majority of people in the vast majority of cases watch all linear ads all the way through. Yeah. yeah. So th there is a possibility in front of us that you could surface that data on an equitable basis for everybody. Okay. Um, so Richard Kirk, I'm going to refer to the media leader. There's this piece, the two pieces that we're referring to here for, for this discussion. He said something. He said, JIC data isn't fashionable. You're not fashionable anymore, apparently. <laughs> I've never um, been fashionable. No, no, I know how you feel. Um, uh, but so we're at this time where agencies are begging for simplicity, but like old school metrics are unfashionable, apparently. So it's all about outcomes. It's all about that sort of stuff. That's well, Soren was talking about time in view. That looked like 100% view through reach to me. He was also talking about sales. So I was wondering about the timeline as well that he was looking at. So that's outcomes as well, isn't well, it? Well, Barb data has always been able to be put together with other data sources to demonstrate outcomes. Okay. So uh, is Barb data, are you unfashionable? Do you want to move well, to this sort of outcomesy with, with, with digital agencies, fancy stuff? I, I think there's two things that kind of create a dynamic in which it's challenging for jigs. One is the shiny new data sets. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned the US. You only have to look at how many companies I mean, it's a shit show I mean, there, isn't it? We don't want to be like the US, do we? The loads of data companies trying to displace Nielsen. Exactly. Yeah. Loads of shiny new data sets, loads of dashboards which make it easy for you to get hold of data. And Richard Kirk said something else, which is that, um, that there's a responsibility on the agencies to really question the data sources that they're using and, and trust. I think they do. I just don't think clients do. That's my viewpoint. Because they, they, they're, they're, they're too close and they, they, uh, they have a very cosy relationship. Mm. And when it's driven by outcomes, they believe what they get told. Mm. That's my view. It's not a very fashionable view, but that's what it is anyway. Yeah. And do you think you guys should get into that? Do you think the broadcasters here should get into the outcomes game? Uh, well, Fight fire as I said, with fire? Barb has always been used to, I mean, I, when I was very young, I used to see all those Millwood Brown charts where you had the awareness curve with the Barb ratings yeah. underneath. Um, when I landed at ITV 20 years ago, we'd put Barb data together with AGB super panels to demonstrate the effect of different types of airtime on sales. So it's always been possible to do that. 
I think what, again, going back to our consultation, advertisers were saying that they need audience-centric measurement, mm -hmm. comparable data um, across all um, services, and that that measurement shouldn't be uh, in silos according to business models. Okay, so there's, there's another initiative, obviously, Origin in this country with WFA. WFA stuff is happening all over the world. It's sort of working-ish, failing mostly. What's the likelihood of it happening here? Like, is that a problem if there's another way of measuring cross-media that's outside of what you guys do? Well, the thing that we're working with Origin on is to ensure the BARB data that is preserved in, the integrity of the data is preserved in Origin outputs. And, okay. and Origin has said they want BARB data in there. Um, there's a question for the users of the data. Mm -hmm. Is that BARB data, because you've got to be careful of false equivalences. Mm. If you're getting BARB data which is based on full see-through reach and frequency and you've got data for other platforms coming out of Origin which is not, yeah. is that really equivalent? Should you be putting those two numbers into your mixed market modelling or whatever other way you are mm -hmm. trying to prove the effect of your advertising? You really have to be careful with false equivalences. And that's one of the reasons behind the article I wrote last week which yeah. is we have to get to the point where, in my view, joint industry principles, Let's get comparable data for everybody. Okay, chance out of 10 for it happening. Last final word, uh, origin being successful in this country. Uh, out gonna, of 10. I'm not gonna put a number on it. I've, I've worked on- I will. I, I, yeah, three. Three. Yeah. Because they went to digital yeah. first, not the broadcast. In other markets, they went broadcaster first and then they've gone uh, to digital. I, I, and it's actually been a bit more successful. I, I've worked on a couple of big in industry projects in my life and uh, I won't bore you with the details of them, but they're, they're not easy to pull off quickly. But the thing you can't underestimate is the financial challenge. Yeah. I, I remember going to Tim Schoonmaker at EMAP and selling the vision for what is now JET. For those of you who <laughs> work in radio, you'll know JET. The, and he said, double the budget, double the timeline. I said, I've done that. And it, it still wasn't enough. Okay. And what you have to remember with... So um, they run out of cash. So since WFA and Origin were announced in 2019, a few things have happened in the world. Yeah pandemic, Ukraine, cost of living crisis. Okay. Th 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 there's lots more pressure on money everywhere. And, okay. and I think, let's see where they are in a year. I'm okay, there was no laughing. positives there, so I give that a four. Uh, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, can you just join me in thanking Justin Sampson for being good sport? Thank you. Very insightful. Thank you.